a really great show, as Ed Sullivan used to say, a really great show. Tonight we have Helen Saris Herman. Um, before I introduce her, I would like to uh, give a preview of April. We have Eric Hoffman. He will be talking about Jade and pseudo Jade and how to detect uh, Jade substitutes. So that should be really, really informative. And that is on April 20th. And that, that will be our last Zoom meeting of the year, hopefully. And then in May, we kick off the in-person meetings with Antoinette Matlins. And um, right now we have it planned at Glory Days. We're pretty locked in with uh, Glory Days in Alexandria. And then in June, uh, we plan to have another uh, uh, live uh, in-person meeting uh, starting at uh, possibly, very possibly at the Holiday Inn in Boston. So hopefully that will be our new home for our chapter meetings. And we're really looking forward to all of this. But tonight, I'm very pleased to introduce Helen Saris Herman. She is an award-winning gem cutter and lapidary. She was inducted into the Lapidary Hall of Fame. Uh, she's been a longtime chapter member uh, and, a, and a friend for, for many, many, many years. And she will be talking about, you know, all the different mines she's been to and the results of, of her visits to those mines all over the world. So please give a warm Washington DC welcome to Helen Saris Herman. I'm thrilled to be here. Okay, let's uh, do the sh screen sharing now. Uh, over the past three decades, we have visited many mines and mining museums around the US. Some are active mines producing beautiful gem materials, minerals, gold, silver, and copper while others offer tours of the historic establishments that contributed to the local mining industry of the time. Some of these mining attractions hold sentimental memories for me. Some stand out because of the specimens we collected, others for the stories and the people who owned them, many of whom became longtime friends. I hope that you will have a better understanding of the mining challenges, which are reflected in the gemstones values and availability. You will also get excited and plan your own visit and adventure to these fabulous places for a first hand exploration. So we'll start in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina is a big state and although the we visited a lot of the um, shore and we loved to go um, to the Outer Banks. All the way on the other side of the state are, are the Blue Ridge Mountains. And that's where the mineral wealth of the state comes. Several times we've gone uh, to Wild Acres, which is just north of Asheville. Uh, it's, a, it's a workshop sponsored by the Eastern Federation of Mineralogical Societies. Uh, they have two sessions a year, a spring and a fall, and um, they have the special uh, feature to invite a speaker in residence, as they call it, to give six lecture presentations during the week. So uh, I've been uh, honored, uh, I think, three, uh, at least three times uh, to be the speaker. And every time we've flown, flown into a different location, either Asheville or Charlotte, and take us uh, different trips uh, around there. So here's some of the North Carolina's mineral wealth, uh, rubies, sapphires, aquas, morganite, green barrels, that we're gonna see in, in a minute up close. A lot of the mines uh, have the, the uh, flumes that you can go and sit. This is a gemstone, gem mountain. You can go sit there and uh, screen your uh, gemstones. They are open usually uh, from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Uh, the winter is a little bit too cold for the uh, mines to sit there. And um, although a lot of uh, uh, the material that is there is what is called 
salted. Uh, that means that uh, the gravel is uh, native, but they put some extra uh, minerals, some amethyst or citrine for Brazil here and there. But they also have what's called the native buckets, uh, which is absolutely the native material. And usually those are more expensive and the ratio of finding anything in that is uh, uh, a lot lower than the others. But remember, as much as we are the pure rock hounds and we don't want anything uh, uh, to be uh, salted, the mines cannot just live with our pure rock hounds. So they need uh, more families to come in and we want the kids to be introduced to these mines, even if they find uh, amethyst from Brazil. It doesn't really uh, matter. We want them to intro get introduced to the whole idea of uh, mining and rock hounding. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim Mountain also uh, owns the Brushy Creek Aquamarine Mine uh, in Spruce Pine. And uh, uh, you can take the tour or uh, rock hounding trip. There's a wall in, over there, as you see. And what they do, they go in ahead of uh, the, the tour and they blast the wall down and all these rocks fall and you can go and with a hammer blast uh, more rocks or just walk around and if you're lucky you can just pick up these beautiful aquamarines so um, you can uh, pick up enough to make the trip worthwhile um, they're not maybe very jammy as you might pick up somewhere else but it's still worth the trip. Uh, there's beautiful morganite and golden barrels uh, that come from, from that area. And you can also uh, buy them at the shop. Another uh, shop uh, right, right down the road from uh, Jim Mountain is the Rio Dosa, which uh, uh, changed hands a few years ago. And uh, the people that own it now, uh, I think as the previous people, they are lapidaries and fasteners, and they can give you a lot of information. Uh, here is just to get a, an idea of their specimens, of the aquamarine specimens. And they're not, they're not uh, uh, inexpensive, you know, $200, $150, um, $100, and they are not real, real jemmy. Uh, but they're beautiful specimens. They have the, hex the hexagonal formation. So, so that's what the people are looking for. Another shop is, or was, I will say, uh, the Linville Mountain uh, Gem Shop in Linville, uh, just about a half an hour north of Spruce Pine. And I'm saying was because they, they just closed this year. Uh, when we visited in uh, uh, 2018, the, the shop was run by the, um, by the guy's wife. Uh, he was the, the main lapidary and goldsmith and he did created everything, cut the stones, uh, but he has been disabled and his wife was running the shop. So she was looking to sell the shop. So uh, I don't know if the shop was sold, but it's closed now, unfortunately. Uh, they had this beautiful aquamarine cabs for sale at, at the shop. Uh, nice little inclusions, just very, very unique uh, for the area. A great place to go is the Museum of North Carolina Minerals in Spruce Pine. It's right, right just before you get on the, um, uh, on, on the road to uh, 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 Wild Acres. Uh, on the, uh, Blue, uh, on the Blue Ridge uh, Parkway. Uh, great little museum. It has fabulous exhibits. Uh, it tells all about the history, about copper and iron and gold, the gold rush, uh, America, America's first gold rush, remember, remember in uh, North Carolina. So really, really wonderful uh, exhibits. A uh, great mineral displays. Um, th this is a, a, these are a garnets in the pegmatite because it's all about the pegmatites there. And again, uh, the golden green uh, barrels, beautiful exhibit there. Another place is Hittonite, where the Emerald Holo mine is. That's just a little further east. And uh, uh, 
what what you find there uh, is hidenite, which is the green variety of spodumene. And you can go, as you see right here in the creeks, and, and go and uh, dig. Um, you may not find the best. So I, I just want to uh, show you uh, some values of, of that uh, on Etsy, which is not always the most dependable uh, price uh, uh, comparison, but here's a little three carat crystal for $200. So here's what some of our crystals uh, that we have, uh, the hidden night crystals. And uh, just as uh, this year I had, uh, I made some of them into, uh, into pendants. And as you all know, um, as you will see through the show, a red dot means it's in a good home, right? So uh, one of these pieces uh, found a good home uh, during Tucson. Uh, a special uh, mineral, or, or it's a rock actually, it's the Crabtree Emerald. It's emerald in matrix known as Crabtree Emerald. Uh, what is it? It's actually a rock composed of white feldspar that serves as the background canvas. And we have the black tourmaline needles and interspersed with mica that glitters and beautiful, perfect little uh, bright green emerald crystals. And the more emerald crystals they are, the higher the value. So, and uh, originally the American Gem and Pearl Company of New York acquired the mineral rights to the Crabtree mine back in 1905 producing emeralds for the, for the Tiffany Company in the New York, but only until 1908. Today, the, the mine is all flooded, as you see here, I mean, uh, even from back when, but uh, there's some fee digging of the dumps is allowed, and you can contact the Mountain Area Gem and Mineral Association, it's like a club, and uh, you can go in and uh, rock count in the dumps. Here's some beautiful specimens of the Crabtree Emerald uh, that show beautiful uh, emerald uh, specimens. That's at the Emerald Village Museum that we're gonna see in a, a moment. Uh, again here, big beautiful zone, a whole zone here of the emerald crystals. Uh, the, the top piece was at the Linville shop, it was a little carving. Uh, beautiful, full of emerald crystals. On the bottom, you see uh, those emerald crystals, they're pulled out and they are being faceted. And that's what uh, Tiffany was doing. Uh, one of the uh, premier uh, uh, lapidaries here is Wolfgang Mueller from uh, the company DeWolf. And he shows here in Tucson, he cut this beautiful cabochon and he, he loves this material. And just this year, he, he came over to the booth. He says, you want to see something? Sure, we want to see something, yeah. So here he pulls this magnificent sphere he just finished. I said, okay, how much you want to sell it? Oh, I don't know if I want to sell it. You know, <laughs> okay, maybe. Uh, would you probably sell it for a price? Well, yeah, maybe for 7,000. So just to understand the value of the Crabtree Emerald. Really rare uh, anymore. So here's a, a few more uh, faceted pieces at the Emerald Village. And here from Etsy, at 8.3 carats for, for $300. Here's a half a carat, a little cleaner stone for 250. So, so the Emerald Village is another location where you can go and uh, uh, do the feed digging. And um, they have a, a, a great museum. You see Tim right there, it was one of the uh, times we went together there from Wild Acres. Uh, they have the, uh, the Mineral Museum, a great, great display. And uh, you walk outside, uh, it's uh, the location of the uh, old uh, Bonami mine. And outside they have the uh, flumes that you can sit and, and dig for your stones. Uh, here's some more from the Linville gem shop uh, of the Crabtree. And pendants and rings to get an idea of the of the pricing. Uh, here is some from the Emerald Village I pulled from their website. So uh, 
it's only a 40 by 30 uh, uh, cab for uh, 200 something dollars in set in sterling. And here's another one. So you, I want you to understand the, the value of the Crabtree Emerald right now. So from Asheville that we were right here, all the way down in the corner of the state where the Great Smoky Mountains are, is and, and the, um, the reservation and everything is there. There's a, a great museum, the Franklin Gem Mineral Museum. A great display is there. You can go see it. it's in the old jail. Uh, and nearby, that's all. That's where the the valley is, the Macon Valley, uh, where uh, the uh, rubies and sapphires are found and garnets. Right. So here we are at the Mason Gem Mine, and uh, uh, hoping for the best. And here's some of the uh, Rodolite gardens and he's holding in his, in his hand. So a lot of, a lot of beautiful gardens. Some are small, but others are big enough, maybe even for, for fastening. So beautiful gardens. Another mine there is a Sheffield mine in Franklin. And that is a pretty big mine. As you see, the, the flume is a pretty big here. Um, you can sit there and, and, but, Remember, it's a hard, hard day's work. You have to go back and forth and uh, uh, carry the buckets and, and put them in the, in the screen and uh, uh, screen them. So not, not very easy work, but you know, you can get through. What they have a special thing at the Sheffield mine <laughs> that is <laughs> enjoyable. Uh, they have uh, what is called the, the honker sapphires if it's over a hundred carats. Uh, they take your photo here, they put your photo up there, they give you a certificate. So, uh, so you go home and you're really happy about all this, that you did something. If, of course, you find some, something a little bigger than 100 carats, which is uh, not too common, but uh, it can be done. So here's just a few of those sapphires. I think this was the honker that Andy found and a few others. A lot of them will star or at least have a some, some kind of a chateauancy. So here's a big one uh, that we got uh, from, from another uh, 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 customer. It, it was from a, a, a family, the father had gone down there and rock hounded. Um, and again, just to give you an idea, I know this is a real crappy photo, but uh, from uh, Etsy, a 31 carat stone for $800. So it has this pretty nice star, but uh, and here's a couple of the ruby crystals set in uh, in uh, fourteen karat gold. So just to get an idea of the pricing for that, uh, sapphire crystal. This is a, that was a really nice big sapphire crystal that we had to bring back with us from the from Yancey County. And here's uh, sapphires uh, that were at the Linville shop. Uh, from Haywood County. Um, if I remember correctly, they were about $100 a carat. Uh, unfortunately, I was trying to, <laughs> when I tried to contact them uh, a few months ago, they had closed, so I, I don't have any more. So from North Carolina, we're just gonna uh, go just a little bit south in Georgia, um, uh, just on the on northeast corner of Georgia right here. Um, you see Atlanta is here. Uh, there's uh, Dahlonega. That's another uh, uh, location of, of the gold rush back in 1836. Um, uh, we have the Dahlonega Gold Museum. They have a great display of the specimens and gold and gold coins um, that, that were produced from that gold. So a great place to go and visit and learn about the gold rush. And there's a couple of mines that you can go and uh, they're historic mines that you can go. They take you in, into the mine. Uh, this one was the consolidated gold mine, and hey, and he never uh, skipped the, the opportunity to um, to pan for gold anywhere. So, so they they uh, teach you how to pan for gold, and you get some some a few flakes. Another one is a uh, Christens gold mine. They have a, a great exhibit inside and outside. Uh, they have this uh, a ten stamp uh, uh, mill. 
and a lot of equipment outside, old mining equipment, that you get an idea of the uh, mining that was done there. And then they have this uh, uh, area where you can go and, and pan for, for uh, your gold. And um, uh, you can just do it uh, bucket by bucket and you have to go again back and forth the buckets and uh, pan it a little bit at a time. Uh, or you can uh, get um, the big slucer and we didn't opt for that and we should have uh, because th that uh, makes things a little faster. Uh, the interesting thing is that we saw on that day, that was a, a, a October when we went and we saw a lot of people coming and buying the sacks and leaving. It's like, okay, and another one buying the sacks and leaving. Okay, so what are they doing? Why are they not <laughs> panning here? So the, the owner said, Oh, these are all the folks that, that come and buy the sacks for the winter. So during the winter, they stay home and they pan for gold. Okay, that's a nice little uh, adventure for the winter. And here's some of the gold we found. So, uh, so there's a little bit of uh, gold. Uh, and, you know, of course, now the gold is, is through the roof. So from the East Coast, we're going to head out West and go up to Montana uh, for, for sapphires. Uh, we'll be on the, on the West side of the, of the state. Uh, here's uh, Helena and uh, uh, right near here, this is Phillipsburg. So near uh, just uh, South of uh, Missoula. Uh, in Helena, one of the uh, places is the Spokane Bar. And again, you get the buckets, you sift for the sapphires, you turn it upside down. And if you're lucky and you have done everything correctly, some of the sapphires will sit right on top here. So that's, that's the way to do it. Um, the, the sapphires that we found there, they were mediocre. I can't say they were great. So uh, here is uh, Phillipsburg, a little town. Um, we visit a couple times. Um, you can stand right here in the middle, look on the right and look on the left and you can see both ends of town. <laughs> so when they were telling us, oh, the town got all big and exploded. Yep, it's still the same. You can still see the two ends of the town. So the Sapphire Gallery though, it's an absolutely uh, phenomenal gallery. Uh, uh, here are the owners, uh, Shirley Beck and, and uh, Dale. Uh, they're not husband and wife, they're uh, partners. And the gallery is it's just spectacular. You think you walk into a Fifth Avenue uh, shop, beautiful, uh, really focusing on uh, sapphires from Montana and from all over the world. So what they have there, uh, they bring the, the gravel in bags in the shop and you can sit there in the shop and do it year round. It doesn't matter if the snow is piled outside or not, you can sit there and screen for, for sapphires. Uh, right in Phillipsburg is also a wonderful museum, the Granite County Historical Museum. Uh, they have uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, the tunnels reconstructed and showing uh, how the miners, the old miners lived, uh, the hard life. And they have a wonderful collection of uh, Mark Billenberg, who was one of the pioneers of uh, uh, sapphire, uh, of the uh, sapphires, uh, promoting the Montana sapphires. And um, we met with him uh, back in 1996 and uh, his friend, um, uh, Ernie Sorrell, he was a faceter and his wife here. So they both have passed away. So that's one of those uh, one of a kind photos uh, to be uh, treasured. Uh, so right outside of uh, uh, Phillipsburg is Gem Mountain of Montana, and you can go there. You have you see this big uh, uh, setup. Again, you have to haul your buckets back and forth. You know that hard work, and uh, uh, screen them in in the water, and hopefully, no, this you're not gonna find all this. This was years of of collecting. Andy had collected uh, uh, the sapphires uh, back in the uh, late 80s. And uh, so beautiful, as you see, they come in all colors, blue, greens, pinks, uh, pink and red, which are the reds are actually rubies. 
uh, and the bicolors that I love. Uh, they, a lot of them, they treat, the heat treated them for the color to get a little deeper. Uh, the reds don't need any color, so they are natural untreated reds. And um, I've used them in several of, of my pieces and uh, made several uh, sweets, the rainbow sweets, as I call them, uh, from the blues and the yellows and the pinks and use them in, in the jewelry that way too. So uh, again, I love the pinks, the beautiful from pink to purple, violet, or, or one of each, a blue, yellow, purple. So uh, uh, nearby is Virginia City and Nevada City, two very historic towns that you can go and visit and learn. Uh, and there's the museum, the River of Gold Museum. So what can you do? Gold panning, right? And is again there, gold panning. And uh, any occasion, right? So a jar of rotolite garnets and a itty bitty bitty little bit of, of gold there. And uh, also nearby is a Ruby Reservoir uh, near Virginia City that you can find is Amadine uh, Garnets, beautiful little garnets. And uh, I talked to uh, somebody uh, there recently and they said they, they were finding some bigger garnets that uh, were fashionable uh, size. So really beautiful little Amadine Garnets. So from there, we're gonna cross over to South Dakota and uh, here's the, the Black Hills area. And uh, there's a fabulous museum at the Black Hills in Lead, South Dakota, the, the mining museum. Uh, they give the tours there. They show you how, how the, uh, they drilled the wall and put the explosives and everything. And again, of course, uh, they show you how to do uh, gold panning. And you would think by now he would have it packed down, right? So anyhow, uh, at the time, we were very lucky to, to go to the Homestead Copper Mine in Lead, South Dakota. Uh, they were still giving the tours. Now it's all closed. So um, this, this is just a historic mine. You can go and, and look at the mine, but uh, there's no more tour. Uh, back then, uh, you could go inside. They would take you inside of the uh, rotating mills and show you everything, how the whole process. Uh, this is a new building right now uh, and you can just go and and see the mine so again these are very historic photos um, not to be reproduced anymore uh, right there at the black hills right at the shadow of uh, of the presidents in the mount rushmore is a big thunder gold mine again uh, there's equipment outside uh, they give you a demonstration uh, they show you how to do it and you can uh, uh, get the gravel and, and pan for gold. So we'll come down to Nevada and uh, Las Vegas is down here and uh, Reno and Carson City is up here. And if heading up to the Opal Mines, that's the area right here where there is nothing. See, there's nothing on the map up there. You see here's a, a Denio just north of uh, uh, Winnemucca. So uh, you gotta be prepared a little bit, really uh, on, to be uh, uh, on the back uh, country here. There's uh, several mines that uh, mine opal. Uh, one of them is the Royal Peacock in the Virgin Valley there. Uh, you see again, there's this wall uh, that you can go and dig. Uh, they, they ask you not to under dig here. And this was already, uh, under dug by somebody else, so Andy didn't do that. But uh, so the prices are today's prices. The bank digging in the bank, one hundred ninety dollars per day, per person, uh, and you are hoping uh, for the best, right? Or if you don't want to uh, go that expensive route, you can do the tailings that I did for seventy five dollars a day. Uh, now, now back then it was uh, a whole lot less. The owners uh, uh, are, were uh, Harry and Joy Wilson. Harry passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, they had this beautiful uh, little opal shop. You go inside and they have 
all kinds of beautiful opal uh, display that you can uh, see and learn about it. Here are some of the opal that Andy dug out and we've never sold any of that. It's just a couple of uh, real beautiful specimens, beautiful fire. Uh, so uh, why we keep them in, in the jars with water because the, the majority of the Nevada opal uh, has a higher water content. So it has to be kept into the jars. Uh, it's not for cutting. Uh, there's a very small percentage that they let leave outside and it dries out and that is cuttable. But the vast majority is kept with water in jars and sold as mineral specimens. And the other uh, mine is a Rainbow Ridge mine uh, owned by Glenn Hudson. <laughs> you see this very uh, 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 Western entrance here, uh, ranch entrance. And you come to this uh, 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 barn uh, looking, uh, very uh, inconspicuous barn up from outside. And you come inside and there's this fabulous wealth of, of minerals, uh, mineral uh, jars of uh, full with opal. There's this big limbs here, amazing. Uh, these are thousands and thousands of dollars uh, worth of uh, uh, opals. So, and uh, that's Glenn Hudson himself, uh, a great guy, fabulous. He loves, he loves what he does. So what they do here, it's a little bit different than uh, the Royal Peacock. They bring a load of virgin ground. So the load is $700 and it's for one or two adults. And you can sit there for a few days, as long as it takes and go through the, through the pile. Or if you want to just do the tailings, they're hundred dollars a person per day. So um, it takes a while to go through all that. And a fabulous story was when we were there, one guy had just found this amazing black opal, huge, humongous. It has some uh, really beautiful red flashes. And um, he was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's really great. So we asked Glenn, it's like, why isn't he really uh, jumping up and down? It's such a spectacular piece. He said, well, for one, he doesn't really know what he has. <laughs> so on the other hand, um, you know, uh, maybe he feels that, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna go back. Um, so, so we went back to the guy, I said, oh, you know, don't you know what you have? He said, yeah, I know what I have, but I've been coming here for 30 years. So imagine how many times I've, uh, 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 I bought this load and how many uh, uh, good opals I have found. So this is one of the most spectacular ones that I found. <laughs> so imagine that. So mining is not easy. Uh, sometimes we, we see on TV, on these TV shows, you know, five minutes into the show, oh, look what I found, this spectacular crystal. Yeah, well, it takes a whole lot more than that. So from there, uh, we were down in Nevada right here, and we're going to cross over into Oregon uh, and near Plush. Again, you see there's nothing else on the map here, really a uh, uh, back, back country to go for sunstones. Um, there's uh, the public area, the sunstone area, where you can go and collect my uh, sunstones for free. Uh, however, unless you go really early in the season when the snow melts, um, nothing really fantastic will come. It, there will be more um, yellow color. They won't have any color. Uh, so where we went, it was a dust devil mine of uh, feed digging. So back then, uh, they invited uh, uh, several of, uh, uh, gem artists to come and and do a stay for a week and do the, the dig. So the cat went around and, and, and turned the ground up, up and down. Uh, and they have the belt with uh, uh, your screen for the sunstones. And that was one way of uh, helping the mine re repay the hospitality, you know, to stand there and, and pick up the stones. Again, hard work. Right, you have to dig in and, and put it over the screen and screen, stand there and, and screen. And uh, 
the sunstones, uh, they're in this uh, uh, lava uh, 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 host matrix. A lot of them will come loose. And you can, if you're lucky, you walk around and you can just pick them off the ground. And when we were there, there was two ladies walking right up here, right on the ridge up there. And suddenly we hear this voice, oh my God, look what I found. So really, they found these two beautiful, the two most bestest, reddest sunstones of the dig, uh, just like that. And here we are, you know, really hurting our backs. So it is, uh, um, uh, if you're lucky. So this was our home sweet home for the week here. Uh, yeah, we had to open the door, go sideways in. There was no bathroom. The bathroom was outside. First, it was out at the Audi and uh, at the outhouse. And then when the porta potties came, that was like, oh, we got the porta potties. That was amazing. And the, they had to bring the water in. So you had to be really, really uh, uh, careful about how you use the water. So here are some of the uh, sunstones that we collected on that uh, trip. Beautiful, some uh, red and by colors. So they will uh, cut some uh, great stones, the faceted stones. We'll go anywhere from three, three fifty to five hundred dollars a carat, uh, depending on the uh, saturation. Uh, and the, the lighter color will go anywhere from lower the thirty, fifty dollars a carat up to a hundred, hundred fifty dollars a carat, depending on on how much shiller there is. Uh, I've used a couple of, of those stones here, one from my carving of Pluton and Persephone. And uh, this beautiful stone we cut uh, and set in 14 karat uh, rose gold. Uh, several of the, of the gem carvers, they love the sunstone. Uh, here's uh, Tom Hay, uh, he, he loves carving. And I just spoke with him recently. He said um, uh, $75 a carat the ones with Schiller, so about $2,500 for this uh, stone. And uh, Bruce McKay, he's another gem carver, uh, loves uh, sunstones, so beautiful sunstone carvings. So from there, we'll go to Colorado. That's another uh, state packed with uh, gemstones. And uh, from this is uh, uh, Denver here, and uh, we're just going to take a little trip uh, around. Uh, in Cripple Creek uh, is the Molly Kathleen uh, gold mine. That was my first mine ever. Uh, and it was similar to the, um, the photo that I showed you at the beginning where I, you sit in that uh, 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 shaft, the elevator shaft, that you can barely stand and it takes you all the way down deep into the mine. And the town is, is a casino town. So that's kind of uh, uh, crazy today. Um, coming down to Colorado Springs, a great museum is the Western Museum of Mining. Uh, they have a lot of displays and mining equipment outside. You can learn all about uh, uh, mining. And Leadville was one of the most famous silver mining camps uh, in 1877. Um, big fortunes were made and uh, later lost. Um, you can go and, and learn all about the silver minings there. And from Leadville, if you take, uh, you go down south um, uh, through the mountains, uh, it's the Bachelor of Syracuse mine in Ure, sitting right in, 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 in the valley uh, up high. And they take you in, uh, they give you the tour, uh, show you all, all the, the gold mining. Uh, uh, both photos are from the tour. Uh, right in that area, uh, the, the next town over is uh, Silverton. Uh, usually, you see it's all, always uh, snow packed. Uh, this material comes out. Uh, normally, uh, or not, no, more frequently, you'll find rhodonite, just plain uh, rhodonite, uh, which is softer. It's about three to four on, on the Mohs scale. Uh, this material is called asterite because the mine belonged to James Jacob Astor, who drowned on the Titanic. And after he drowned, uh, they sealed the mine and never reopened it until 2000, when this material just came out. And uh, what's 
uh, unique about this material is that it has more quartz, the, the calcineny veins that brings the hardness up, and that is uh, better for uh, us lapidaries. And um, then it has uh, beautiful uh, inclusions of gold and silver. And so there's little birdies here. So I've carved several of these pieces, Re really, really nice material. Um, I've tried to contact the mine several times recently in the last few years, and there's nothing happening right now. So um, it's again, it's one of these mining stories that come and they go. Just, uh, just west of Denver, just outside of Denver, uh, 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 west is uh, Idaho Springs. And there is another uh, a gold mine that you can go and uh, they give you the tour and uh, you can rock around a little bit. Uh, the owner was Al Marsh. Uh, he just passed away again uh, uh, a couple of years ago, but his son uh, has taken over and they do the tours. So they take you inside. Here's some of the ore that comes out of the mine. Uh, you can see gold, silver, copper, pyrite, and tellurium that are visible in this, this rock. Beautiful uh, ore, uh, gold ore. So they take you in the mine, they show you how they do the single jack, the double jack. And then they have this, this bucket, which they call the lucky bucket. And um, uh, you're supposed to rub the bucket, you put a little money in and you rub the bucket and everything goes to charity from there. And uh, first time we went in, in the nineties and then we went back uh, in uh, 206 and Al said, Al Marsh said, you see, you guys, I told you it was a lucky bucket. You see, you're happily married you know, 10 years later. You know? So yeah, so I guess maybe there was some truth to his lucky bucket, right? So from there, we're gonna come down to the last state in Arizona. And of course, there's so much to see and do in Arizona, right? Uh, from, uh, you see from the map here in Tucson, the Morenci mine is right here, up here on uh, about two and a half hours east of, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'll go back a second. Go back a second. No, hold on. I'm looking in the dark. Okay. Um, the Morenci mine is one of the uh, North America's largest producers of copper and has one of the uh, biggest open pit mines and uh, back in uh, uh, 207 we went but it was still going on for a few more years they gave a, a terrific four-hour tour of the of the mine but uh, that has fallen uh, unfortunately uh, off um, the list of uh, to do things so you can't uh, do the tour anymore. You can, there's a um, uh, a place where can, uh, an overlook where you can go and look. So, and I, I love the, the unique pieces, like little uh, quartz with uh, lots of pyrite and a little bit of turquoise. And uh, what I really love is, a, is cuprite, the red cuprite, chrysocolla, the bluish green chrysocolla, there's a little bit of azurite and the copper inclusions uh, from Morenzi. Uh, it's similar to the material, the Sonora Sunrise or Sonora Cusacola that comes from just uh, uh, south of the border uh, near the Cananea mine. Um, but that does not have any copper. So, uh, so the Morenzi is very, very different. And uh, I've cut several of these stones and uh, Really, really beautiful, especially when they have a little bit of azurite and, and the copper. So, or it has this really uh, unique little inclusions in there. Um, and the other thing that uh, comes out from Morenci is azurite, azurite, druzy, you know, uh, azurite. Um, and this really, really unique little specimens are native copper and silver, the natural copper, you see both together. So you see the copper and the silver, the really very, very unique little specimens that I, I kind of loved and I put them in these uh, uh, pendants. 
Another uh, big mine is the Ray Mine, which is about two hours just straight north of Tucson. You see, uh, here's Tucson. Here's up here the uh, the Ray Mine. Um, you cannot go in there uh, to visit the mine. Uh, uh, there's a big overlook that you can go and, and see. Uh, they have a shovel that you can take your your photo and show everybody. But we've gone there a couple times with a uh, with a club, the Tucson Gem Mineral Society, uh, as a field trip and collect the chrysocolla. So so they kind of put it all together in, in, a, in a pile, and um, you can go there. A beautiful Botryoidal chrysocolla comes out of the ray mine. They have these uh, stalactitic uh, formations, really kind of beautiful. This is a spectacular specimen that is at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum here in Tucson. Big, it's a, it's, it's a large, uh, really spectacular specimen. And uh, here's one of my pieces. And what I love is you see the, the Chateauian Malachite and it even has this, it's, this inclusion, this dendrite that is right in there. And um, uh, another material it comes from the Tiger Mine just north of Tucson uh, in Mammoth. It is chrysocolla with uh, malachite, the lighter green, and the dark green sprays is the rare mineral Atacamite. And it makes this really kind of spectacular uh, uh, pieces. Um, so we've cut some of this material and I made it into pendants and earrings. Turquoise, we can talk here, sit here all weekend and talk about turquoise. Uh, there is a lot of turquoise that has been mined. There's very little bit that comes out now. The prices have uh, uh, risen sp spectacularly. <laughs> uh, the Sleepy Beauty mine that was uh, near uh, uh, the Ray mine, um, uh, near Globe is famous for this uh, beautiful, uh, uh, very almost uniform uh, coloration of uh, turquoise. It used to be five to ten dollars a carat. Now it's shooting over thirty dollars a carat. So <laughs> it's a lot of money, real fast, real fast for the uh, the cabs. And uh, I've carved a few of those pieces. And, and I like the a little bit bicolored, a little bit of green. Um, it doesn't have to be the, the very, very deep blue. Uh, I, I've also carved the, the natives, uh, uh, the specimens with the native pyrite and just drilled them. And those have gone real fast. So right in Globe, there's the Bullion Plaza uh, and um, uh, the lapidary that I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Wolfgang Mueller, he's a curator now as of uh, the last few years. He has done a great job inside and outside there's a lot of equipment. It's a great place to stop there. So the only mine that's still uh, active is the Kingman mine, the Kingman turquoise mine. And uh, uh, there's material coming out, although the majority of it is uh, uh, average grade that has to be stabilized and uh, treated. Uh, this is all natural, not treated. With this uh, beautiful uh, square pyrites that I, I just love. So the only uh, mine that you can go and visit today in Arizona, it's a mine right here, just south of Tucson, about uh, um, uh, less than 20, 15 miles south of Tucson, the Asarco Mission Mine. It used to be a Phelps Dodge mine. That's the Asar Commission. It's the only operating open pit copper mine that still offers the tours. So they take you inside, they show you everything, how uh, things move from one to another. Uh, here, you visit these big, uh, big trucks right there. Down in the corner, the southeast corner of, of our, the state is uh, Bisbee. Uh, there's a Bisbee Mining Museum there. Great museum, and it has be, been become a, a a Smithsonian affiliate. So if you have a Smithsonian uh, um, uh, membership, you get in free there, and uh, they helped in uh, with a, a spectacular collection of uh, azurites for the displays of that. 
And they used to, uh, uh, again, used to, as you hear me, uh, sponsor uh, a, the turquoise hunt every October. And uh, used to go in the old uh, Fe Phelps Dodge uh, mine. And they, they turned the, the, the gravel over and you would go in and, and uh, uh, hunt for the Bisbee turquoise. This is some of from the display at the museum uh, that uh, Bisbee is famous. Today, it's, it's in the thousands of dollars to buy anything rough. So they absolutely gone completely uh, uh, crazy. Uh, here's some beautiful uh, pieces at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. This big, thick seams of uh, 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 Bisbee turquoise. It's a, a one half of the two specimens that we got. And first the guy didn't want to sell anything. So first I, 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 I talked him into selling the one half and then we kept talking, talking, talking and then he sold us the other half. So that was really great. So right there in Bisbee, you can take the mine tour, uh, the uh, historic mine, uh, the queen mine tour. You hop on this little train and you go all the way in a uh, hundred feet uh, in, and they show you how, how the drilling, how the stoping, how everything was done back then. Uh, a lot of them were all um, uh, Phelps Dodge employees, uh, the miners, they have firsthand uh, stories to tell and, and share with everybody. Just to give you an idea, look at this sign there. Eight million pounds of uh, copper. 2 million pounds uh, of 2 million point eight ounces of gold, 77 million ounces of silver and so on. So just incredible uh, numbers. Um, it's 8 billion, sorry, 8 billion pounds of copper. Right? So just incredible numbers from 1877 to 1975 is when the mines closed in Bisbee. Um, I, I love the, the Malachite and Azurite. Um, uh, this piece I done is, is drilled up on the top. It's in the good home now. And the copper over pyrite, uh, a pseudomorph. Uh, in Tombstone, which is uh, halfway down from, if you go from Tombstone to, to Bisbee, uh, you can go underground and visit the good enough mine. Uh, that's one of the early mines. There were a lot of mines, uh, over a couple hundred mi uh, mines in Tombstone. And um, you can go in the mine, you'll see all the stopes and everything, and the, the chrysocolla on the wall. Uh, this is some of the complex ore of uh, chrysocolla, tenorite, galena, um, that comes out of uh, Tombstone. And um, they'll be happy to take you. Just to show you some uh, spectacular gold specimens, here's one of, from uh, Cochise County, uh, where Bisbee and Tombstone is, at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. And no, I, they wouldn't let me hold it. It's the curator that's holding it in, in her hand. A beautiful, spectacular specimen. But I, I had the opportunity to carve uh, a couple pieces uh, from uh, Cochise County. Uh, this is one of them, and it's at the Arizona Lapidary Gem Rough Shop in Tucson. And Although they, they say the county, they, it's an, an undisclosed location. So nobody uh, shares uh, where this is from. So this is the other, the, the other piece here. If we go now up to Phoenix, just east of Phoenix is Apache Junction, and that's where the uh, Goldfield Historic Mine is. And this is the famous Superstition Mountains where so many legends are. Uh, it's the legend of the lost Dutchman, the mine that's lost, uh, they're still looking for it. Uh, it's very treacherous. People are still being lost there. So uh, a lot of stories. Uh, there's a great museum there you can go visit. Right in Goldfield, there's the old mine. Uh, that, uh, they have kind of moved it a little bit. Uh, from the exact location, but you can still go under, underground and visit the mine, the Goldfield mine. And here's some gold from the Black Queen mine there, uh, some gold ore. Um, uh, 
specimens, beautiful specimens, that of course came back with us, you know, uh, couldn't resist. Another mine is the vulture mine uh, from Phoenix. You go up uh, northwest, uh, uh, Wickenburg, and uh, they have uh, restored se several of, um, of the uh, buildings there. But this one is just as it was. You come in here and you think uh, they still have the, the miners' uh, uh, overalls, and you think the miners just left for lunch. So everything is like time stu stood still. It's, it's really beautiful. And they give the tours now on Saturdays. So, so up on the Northwest corner, just South of Kingman is a little place called Oatman, Arizona. And uh, as you see here, it's famous for the donkeys. The donkeys, you see right here, um, uh, there's Kingman and uh, right, right here at the uh, uh, Wallapai Mountains, that's where Oatman is. Uh, so these uh, donkeys, uh, the burros, are descendants of uh, the burros that were in the mines. And now they, they just roam freely and they come down in, in the town and you go around the shops and you buy uh, carrots and you feed the donkeys. And the donkeys are happy and the merchants are happy. So, right. And you pass the day. So nearby is a homestake gold mine. And uh, uh, here's uh, one of the two owners. And uh, it is a historic gold mine because they don't mine gold anymore. But uh, here's some of the uh, gold that, that was mined there. So they have all the equipment. They show you there uh, how it was mined, how it, it was processed. But uh, uh, they take you inside. And what is famous now is the fluorite that comes out of the mine. So these are big, big veins on the wall uh, of green fluorite, green and purple fluorite. And uh, uh, they, they fetch uh, pretty high prices for this uh, fluorite from the Homestake mine. So they take you right inside the mine and, and uh, I'll show you everything. So from there, another, another place uh, is Jerome. Uh, you see with the J here, uh, this uh, hill, the famous Cleopatra Hill uh, uh, for the copper mine. Uh, there's a mining museum, the Jerome Historical Society Mine Museum. You go there, you see the spectacular copper ceiling there. And they have a great uh, little mineral exhibit. You go see all the minerals and you learn all about the mining history in Jerome. And there's the Jerome State Historical Park, which is uh, um, housed in the old Douglas mansion. And again, they have uh, all the equipment there and the historical uh, uh, exhibits inside. Uh, outside is the Audrey shaft from the Little Daisy Mine. Um, that it's uh, it's a uh, uh, a landmark now, there you go. And inside they have great, great uh, mineral exhibits, uh, azurites, uh, malachite, chrysocolla, this is a huge chrysocolla outside, it's huge. Uh, so nearby is also, uh, 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 you see here's uh, Phoenix, here's Prescott, here's Sedona, and here's Cottonwood right there. Uh, that's where uh, nearby is Clarkdale, another uh, mining town. Today is the uh, the beginning of the uh, railroad, the Verde Canyon Railroad Depot, and you can take a spectacular uh, a train ride. It's an hour and a half each way. It goes from one end to another, and you pass uh, through beautiful country, uh, through the old mining dumps, um, and, and, and you learn they have. Uh, great, great exhibits here. So you, you learn a whole lot of um, uh, gold and copper mining. And one of the most spectacular museums that have opened uh, recently is the Arizona Copper Art Museum in Clarkdale. There's pretty much nothing else in Clarkdale except the depot and this. And the first time we went years ago, um, that's in the old uh, high school. Uh, it was just a deserted high school there. So there was nothing there. But now is this spectacular museum. It opened um, just 10 years ago in 2012. And it houses the most remarkable rich collection of copper art and copper minerals. So you go in every age and every century and every kind of art of copper art is represented in this museum. 
and um, this museum could have been anywhere, you know, in, in the heart of uh, New York or somewhere in Washington, D.C., uh, just, just a spectacular museum, but they wanted it to be in Arizona because it's a copper, the copper state and because of the history in Clarkdale. So um, again, spectacular uh, copper ceilings, uh, copper vases of every uh, time, uh, uh, a lot of European art. So just a spectacular museum to go through. And they have a great little exhibit here of copper, azurite. Uh, this is called Apache gold. It's a trade name for a unique metallic rock of uh, uh, copyrite in, in the jet black uh, chloride schist. And it's only found in the United Verde mine in Jerome. A lot of people cut uh, stones and it's sold as a, as a, a local specialty, you know, uh, something really uh, one of a kind. So each visit to this mines and mining museums left incredible memories treasured experiences that I would recommend to any, anyone. Uh, here we are at the, in Idaho Springs and, and here in Sheffield. And uh, uh, this presentation uh, started with a, a, a series of three articles that I did for Rock and Gem. And you can find them at rockandgem.com in the digital issue library. It's free. Uh, all you have to do is they ask you for your email if you if you not, if, you haven't done that already. And it's um, uh, the Massey U.S. Gemstone Mines, the part one, North Carolina, the part two, Montana, South Dakota, and part three, Colorado and Arizona. So uh, you can uh, access all, all the, these articles. And here's my book that uh, uh, we were talking, we have been talking uh, quite a bit. Um, it's been a labor of love. Uh, Took me about uh, two years. It went back and forth. Uh, it became bigger, and then it became shorter. <laughs> so with a lot of uh, uh, stories of uh, <laughs> of its own, um, how I had to fight uh, the pandemic, uh, uh, paper uh, 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 restrictions. I couldn't do a hardcover because there was not enough paper, <laughs> and uh, which. Uh, the, the timing we came a really really right right against uh, uh, Tucson, so um, and uh, here's what the uh, uh, award winning a uh, uh, a journalist Diana Jarrett wrote recently. Um, in this book, we are treated to a concise tome of the captures Helen's life and work, and importantly, it serves as a record of the journey she's taken to arrive at her destination of passion for carving gemstones. Family history and major milestones punctuate the path she's been traveling for a lifetime. No artist's talent ever develops in a vacuum. Our life experiences and observations help to frame our personal perspective and fine tune our sense of aesthetics. And this is precisely what we learn about how her sensibilities were developed. She invites us to journey with her uh, with her on, on her globetrotting adventures while she explains that what transpired in her persistence to learn all there was to know about gemstone carving. And along the way, she picked up loads of awards plus an induction of the Lapidary, National Lapidary Hall of Fame. So just a wonderful uh, 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 write up. I mean, uh, so in the end, she says, not only does her passion for gemstone carving spill over the reader, but we also become enamored with the entire process of gemstone carving ourselves. With more than 300 photos, it's uh, hard to put down the book. Well done, well done. So that was a, a wonderful uh, write-up. So I'm just gonna give you a, a couple of photos here. Uh, this was um, the booth in Tucson at the uh, AGTA. A lot of you remember me, I used to be downstairs with my little booth. I was happy there, but then they moved the, the designers upstairs and I, I didn't want to go back for the last couple of years. So finally I decided to go back this year. So this was my booth upstairs. And <laughs> here's a, just a little uh, a glimpse of, of, of the people there. Um, you see uh, Shirley and Dale from Montana here, uh, Michelle. Azabel, 
um, uh, Frank, uh, 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 um, um, uh, she's written the book, uh, Branca, uh, about uh, diamonds. Uh, so we're there, both self-published books. Um, I bring a Rachel from Hawaii uh, with my editor from the Tucson Easy Guide, because this year there was no more uh, the big book, the Tucson Easy Guide, the Tucson uh, Show Guide, that's all folded now, and uh, a Lapidary Journal has folded too. So the only uh, uh, guide was the Tucson Easy Guide, and I write for them and had uh, my article for them. Uh, with uh, Cindy Schloss from uh, the Phoenix chapter here, uh, a fabulous uh, artist, uh, Naomi Hines. We are at the, uh, at the club show here and with Andy. So, and he, here's uh, some of the uh, new pieces that I, I premiered, the Natural Rubies collection, all the rubies uh, from um, Madagascar. You see this amazing uh, uh, external features, the, these pyramids. I call these the pyramids of Giza right here, all natural. All I've done, I have, people think that I, I've cut and uh, trimmed them. No, these are all the natural rubies. All I've done is just groove it on the side to get the wire in. So all these trigons, these are all, all natural. So really, really uh, 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 terrific. So, so that's it for this presentation. And if you're all with me, I have just a little bit to show you from the new museum, uh, the Alfie Norville German Mineral Museum. So this is the old courthouse. And, and uh, uh, there's a couple of different things there. So it's the new Alfie Norville German Mineral Museum in Tucson. And it's called the Alfie Norville because uh, uh, Alfie Norville was uh, one of the uh, promoters. She was uh, uh, the GJX owner and a big uh, uh, prom uh, uh, promoter of, the, uh, of having a museum like that in Tucson. Uh, here we are with the with the Old Pueblo Laboratory Club. We, we uh, did the the uh, the tour, and uh, here's uh, uh, the um, manager, uh, the curator, Eric Fritz, and he gave us uh, the tour. You come into this hall. This is this spe spectacular uh, uh, quartz right here, uh, spectacular specimen. So uh, great displays. Uh, great digital displays as you go around. Uh, there's big screens that tell the story uh, of, of a lot of things. Beautiful, um, uh, unique specimens. This forced to the right from San Carlos, from uh, the reservation uh, where you get the uh, peridot. This uh, Sibnite from uh, uh, China. That's a big, spectacular uh, specimen. A Gaspii from the Gaspé uh, Bay. Uh, we know a lot of Gaspii from Australia, but this is from the original location in Canada. Mm. Uh, this was a, a, a wonderful display of petrified uh, wood here from Arizona. And yes, we've seen a lot of uh, spectacular uh, formations of the reds and greens, but the real rarity is this blue-green one. This is really, really, really rare. So you, you can hardly ever see this coloration. So that's that was a really, really spectacular specimen. And one thing I really loved was this uh, collection of paintings uh, of uh, miners. It was a Phelps Dodge collection of oil paintings from 1923. And um, they have them all on display there. So really beautiful, beautiful display. Uh, Arizona turquoise, you come into the, the gallery, it has a the turquoise, the copper, and the gold. Here's the gold specimens, just to, to feast your eyes on, on gold from Arizona. And uh, the, the gold rush that, that happened here in Arizona. Uh, the silver mines, uh, when silver was king and the spectacular silver specimens. And, you know, they have just recently, uh, maybe I've shown you before, the big silver boulders that they found uh, on just north of Phoenix uh, very recently. So that's a, a spectacular piece. Here's a, a recreation of the Bisbee mine and with all the azurite 
uh, uh, crystals right, right in the pockets as they were found. So that's a spectacular recreation of the mine. Uh, you see all the, uh, the stopes here and everything, all the, the different levels of the mine. And here's a, a, some of the uh, minerals that come from uh, uh, Bisbee. So here's just a, a, a look of these wonderful display cases, great, great uh, 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 LED lights, uh, a beautiful pocket with a, 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 a pegmatite pocket with a <laughs> kunzite and tourmalines. And this spectacular uh, 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 amethyst uh, cathedral, uh, it's closed and then it just uh, twirls, you hit the button and it opens and you can see the inside. That's a, a really beautiful little feature. And they have some a great spectacular um, uh, fluorescent cases. Uh, these are from Arizona, uh, the specimens. So it's a whole row of, uh, of fluorescent specimens. Um, the gallery uh, uh, of the gems is spectacular. And I know Charlene showed it uh, last time with some close-ups of, uh, of these uh, gems. And um, I, I like the, the light and dark gem minerals uh, display. That was a, a great little display. They have this fantastic uh, turquoise necklace here. There's the, the humongous beads, uh, in, invaluable, all natural uh, color. And here's a, 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 our little display from the Old Pueblo Laboratory Club. I was honored to ask and asked to uh, put the pieces in. So, uh, so these are my pieces and uh, the photos from, from the club. And the, um, here's a cabin club and one of the field trips here. So, and they have the screens there that, that, uh, that show me and my work and all that. So that, that's very honored. And on the, on the ground level, they have, um, uh, they're setting up uh, for, for the classes. So they have all these microscopes that uh, were uh, um, donated uh, by the GIA. And uh, uh, we just gave a, a donation from the club. And I just read that they, they just bought the covers for the microscopes with uh, our donations from uh, El Pueblo. And uh, in that easy guide that I showed, uh, it was my article, uh, while you're here, don't miss the, uh, the museum. And um, you can find it if you go to uh, expopress.com, you can find, find the article. Uh, you can find the whole easy guide, it's downloadable for free now, and you can find the, the article. So here we are with Andy, uh, that was a, uh, last year in the spring when we went to set up the exhibit. So, and that is it.